Good morning viewers today i am present before you with the podcast on fr levis and his idea of criticism before i begin the podcast it is advisable that you keep a notebook and a pen so that you can jot down the important points relating to this particular topic it is further advisable to use earplugs for better listening so here i begin f r levis was a british literary critic of the early to mid 20th century born in the year 1895 he died in 1978 he championed seriousness and moral depth in literature and criticized what he considered the amateur belletrism of his time his criticism falls into two phases in the first influenced by t s eliot he devoted his attention to english verse in the 1940s his interest moved toward the novel he reassessed english fiction proclaiming jane austen george eliot henry james joseph conrad as the great novelists of the past and d h lawrence as their only successor Levis is regarded as one outstanding figure of new criticism in England. Sometimes his criticism is also called philosophical criticism. It enshrines poetry on the highest altar of truth and teaches to appreciate poetry as an abstract quality, but literary criticism to Levis is not philosophy. In his essay literary criticism and philosophy he says the critic the reader of poetry is indeed concerned with evaluation but to figure him as measuring with a norm which he brings up to the object and applies from the outside is to misrepresent the process the critic's aim is first to realize as sensitively and completely as possible this or that which claims his attention and a certain valuing is implicitly in the realizing as he matures in experience of the new thing he asks explicitly and implicitly where does this come how does it stand in relation to how relatively important does it seem and the organization into which it settles as a constituent in becoming placed is an organization of similarly placed things things that have found their bearings with regard to one another and not a theoretical system or a system determined by abstract considerations the business of the literary critic is to attain a peculiar completeness of response and to observe a peculiarly strict relevance in developing his response into commentary he must be on his guard against abstracting improperly from what is in front of him and against any premature or irrelevant generalizing of it or from it his first concern is to enter into possession of the given poem in its concrete fullness and his concern is never to lose his completeness of possession but rather to increase it in making value judgments and judgments as to significance implicitly or explicitly he does so out of that completeness of passion and with that fullness of response he does not ask how does this accord with these specifications of goodness in poetry he aims to make fully conscious and articulate the immediate sense of value that places the poem Levis is also studied as a leader of cultural criticism who advocated and practiced the authenticity of literary criticism propounded by Arnold, Lionel Trilling, Raymond Williams. The function of criticism has become all the more important in our time when cultural values are in danger of being denigrated by hostile forces like industrialism, political factionalism and fanaticism. political and capitalistic exploitation scientific and technological materialism 
threat of war and general deterioration in human relation. Dr. Lewis is a man of very strong taste. He loves clarity, solidity and hardness. He does not like the romantic vagueness in criticism or creation. He is an analytical critic and does not believe in making sweeping generalizations. He wants matter of fact, precise and concrete criticism. He does not love mere jugglery of words. Throughout his career, Lewis was partial to writers who represented a morality characteristic of rural communities prior to industrial revolution. In the face of what he called the crisis in modern culture, Lewis demanded that literature evoke a positive view of life and promote values he deemed essential to the preservation of a humanistic culture. Ultimately, Lewis judged a work by the type of moral values it affirmed. This part of his critical method is extremely vulnerable to disapproval, particularly because Lewis never offered a fully developed theory to support his views. Rather, he believed that theorizing and philosophizing serve only to distract the critic from the primary and difficult task of evaluation. So this was a small note on how F.R. Lewis looks at the whole idea of criticism. Since we all know that criticism from the very beginning till the modern times continuously evolved depending on the needs of the society. So when we come to F.R. Lewis, it has a very different tendency of interpretation and further output. I hope this podcast helps you in understanding the idea of criticism as propounded by F.R. Lewis in a better way. Please do like, share and subscribe to the channel and in the comment section below, share your feedback or if there are any questions pertaining to this podcast, feel free to ask them. Thank you for your valuable time. Here's wishing you a great day ahead.